If communication is discussed, three terms are likely to appear. Sender, message and receiver. And those hail from one of the oldest and most basic communication models of all, the Shannon Weaver model. And today we'll take a look at that. Welcome to the Soft Skill Channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today I'd like to present to you the Shannon Weaver model. Claude Shannon was working at the American telephone company Bell and there he um, created a model about the transmission of communication. And he described it in an article called A Mathematical Theory of Communication. He published this article in an internal scientific journal at Bell in 1948 and one year later he published it as a book together with Warren Weaver under the slightly different title The Mathematical Theory of Communication. Now as you've probably noticed, this model wasn't originally about interpersonal communication, but it was about mathematical and technical aspects. And it seems the model is quite important in this regard. Claude Shannon is one of the founders of information theory and um, his model appears to be a very important um, groundwork for, for our modern information technology. The model basically works like this. I am the source and I want to transfer a message, so I'm calling a friend. And I speak my message into my telephone. My telephone is the sender. It encodes the message, meaning it turns my spoken message into an electrical signal. <clears throat> this signal travels through a channel, which is in this case the telephone line. And it arrives at the receiver, which is my friend's telephone. And the receiver decodes the message, so my friend's telephone turns the electrical signal back into audible language. So my friend, who is the destination, can listen to my message. The transfer was successful if the message my friend hears is identical, identical to the one I spoke into my telephone. The diagram may vary a bit depending on the source. For example, Shannon also described noise that might uh, disturb the um, signal on its way. Um, so you have maybe crackling or something um, in your audio. And some diagrams include that noise, so the diagrams um, are slightly different depending on the creator and depending on which aspects of the model he wanted to showcase. Now people thought, hey, this whole sender, receiver, encoding, decoding thing, this also occurs in interpersonal communication. Because if I speak to someone, I have to turn my thoughts into spoken language, so I have to encode them. And the person I talk to, the receiver, has to turn the spoken language back into thoughts, so he has to decode them. There is um, a well-known quote that describes this process. Thought is not said. Said is not heard. Heard is not understood. Understood is not agreed, and so on. It's usually attributed to Conrad Lawrence, but as far as I was able to find out, the original creator is unknown. Speaking of unknown, I also couldn't find out who made this transfer of using the mathematical technical Shannon Weaver model for interpersonal communication in this um, 
regard, Stuart Hall and Paul Watzlawick are mentioned, but I'm not sure who was actually responsible and it probably wasn't a single person. If you apply the model to interpersonal communication, of course, you don't need the channel, you also don't need to distinguish between uh, source and sender and so on. So in the end you just have sender, message, receiver. The Shannon Weaver model is quite popular, quite well known. At least in Germany it will appear in almost every communication workshop. Um, everywhere communication is discussed, the Shannon Weaver model is likely to come up. So, what is the main point, the main idea we can learn from the Shannon Weaver model? The most important point is that what the sender means and intends is not necessarily identical to what the receiver hears and understands. We've also seen this in Schulz von Thun's models and, uh, models and theories. He also says the sender sends a different message than the one the receiver receives. And his four sides of a message model basically um, provides an explanation for why that is. Another idea we can derive from the Shannon Weaver model is that language as a medium has its limits. For example, imagine a situation where two people want to talk to each other, but they speak different languages. So the receiver cannot decode the message and communication doesn't work. Or maybe a situation where they speak the same language, but one of them is quite proficient and the other just has a very basic knowledge so there are understand, uh, problems of understanding and communication can't work smoothly. But even if both of them speak the language perfectly well, there might still be problems and misunderstandings because the sender might have a different idea of what exactly a word means and he might relate it to two different ideas than the receiver. You might go into even more detail, for example, I mentioned noise described by Shannon. So you could say, for example, imagine two people are talking to each other at a party and there is a lot of noise and music and whatever in the background, so they can't understand each other well. But um, as I said, the most important idea is clearly what the sender means is not necessarily what the receiver understands. And of course, the terminology. The terms sender, message and receiver are used everywhere where communication is discussed. You've already seen that Schulz von Thun uses them as well. They are widely used, widely understood, quite popular. So this is um, this terminology is from the Shannon Weaver model and today it is used everywhere in communication. <clears throat> One reason the model is so popular today, still today, is that it is very simple, easy to understand and Therefore, it can also easily be applied to different situations. For example, the message doesn't necessarily have to be spoken language. It could also be a letter or an email, so it could be written language. Or it could even be body language, because also in body language we unconsciously encode meaning. So we can apply the model there as well. It can easily be applied to different contexts, to different situations. However, since it is so simple, it doesn't have a lot of depth and we can't use it to describe complex uh, interactions and yeah, complex communication.
For example, there is no context at all, the sender and receiver uh, don't have any, any attributes, they are interchangeable and it doesn't really matter what the language contains. So this is all quite simple and basic. Have you had any experience with the Shannon Weaver model? Have you maybe uh, taken part in a communication workshop where it was discussed? Have you encountered it anywhere else? Please let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to your feedback. Also, if you enjoyed the video, I would of course appreciate a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. I would be quite happy to have you as a subscriber. And there are plenty more exciting videos about soft skill topics to come. We will see each other next week when we discuss Meta Communication by Schulz von Thun. For today I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.